Now we want to solve a couple of line integrals of function type. Remember that line integrals, or integrals over a curve, have two types that have no relationship one to another except that the integral goes over a curve. How do we tell if a line integral is a function type? What are our key words for that? The first thing we look for is the word length or arc length or only ds in the integral, not dx, dy, dz. 1d, ds. And the second thing we look for is that the function is in one piece. It's not a vector. It's scalar valued. If I put in x, y, z, I get a number. So it cannot have components. We're looking for something that only has a simple thing in the integral. What is a typical problem from this part? Here's a couple of problems. We're going to solve both of these. Let C be the curve defined parametrically with C equal to S of T. That's a vector with three components, but that's the curve, not the function. Three cosine of T, three sine of T, four T, and we're given an interval T from zero to two pi. Our jobs are problem one, find the length of the curve C, Problem two, find the line integral of the function. And although you see x, y, z here, you see one function over here, one over x squared plus y squared plus z squared over c. So this is not a vector function. It's just a function. <laughs> it's one piece. So in both of these problems, we have clues that we're working on line integrals of function type. We're going to start with the first one, which is calculate the length of curve c. It could also say find the arc length. Or it could say find this, where there's no function here. The function is one. When the function is one, you're looking for arc length. Okay, now this is just a bunch of letters, a bunch of symbols. What we needed to do is look like this. We know how to integrate this. This has only t's in it. It gives us an interval on t. These are functions of t, and this is t. We know how to integrate this kind of thing. So how do we get from here to here? Well, the answer is we have C equal to S of T. It is a curve defined in 3D with the parameter T. It has three components, but when you look at it, you only see T here. You don't see X, Y, and Z. You have to remember that this is the X component, the Y component, and the Z component but you only see one variable and you have an interval. How do we get to this? Well, we can see derivatives here, the little points. So we need to find the derivative vector, which is take the derivative of the first component with respect to t, take the derivative of second component with respect to t, third component with respect to t. What is this of a vector? That is the magnitude of that vector. So we're looking for the magnitude of this derivative vector here. Let's solve this problem. So where do we start? We need t1 and t2. Do we see an interval on t? We do. Here we see that t1 is equal to 0 and t2 is equal to 2 pi. Done with this part right here. Now we need the derivative vector. We've got a vector for the curve. We need to find the derivative vector, ds. So we write vector notation, the derivative of the first component, derivative of three cosine t is minus three sine of t. Done with the first component. Derivative of three sine of t is three cosine of t. And the derivative of four t is four. Now, you have to remember, this is x dot, this is y dot, this is z dot, okay. But importantly, what we want is to get to the magnitude, ds. So how much is ds? It's equal to the first component squared, so minus 3 sine of t squared plus second component, 3 cosine of t squared plus third comma squared times dt equals this is 9 sine squared. 
this is 9 cosine squared, and this is 16 dt. And if we know that this is 9, and so 9 plus 16 is the square root of 25 dt, equal to 5 dt. Squeeze it in there. Okay, so now we've got everything we need to find the arc length. So how much is L? L is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi, 5 dt, a very simple integral, 5t from 0 to 2 pi equal to 10 pi. So the length of the curve, this curve right here, is 10 pi. Let's go see that. So here we are in Sage notebook. Here's our vector s, 3 times cosine t, 3 times sine t, 4t. Our interval is from 0 to 2 pi. We're doing a parametric plot, and we already have it. There it is. What it is is a helix, a circular helix, and you can see it goes around exactly once there. So we're looking for the length of that piece of circular helix. I want to show you here, we've drawn points along the helix, evenly spaced with respect to t. And notice that they're evenly spaced with respect to the curve itself. That's where we're getting that that derivative magnitude is constant 5, is because here's where we're using our solver to check our work. Again, we put in the vector. We tell the program, find our derivative vector, ds. Notice that we have a correct, minus 3 sine t, 3 cosine t, 4. We tell it to calculate the norm, but here you can't see it as well because it doesn't actually clear it up to be 5, but of course we did it and showed that it was 5. Then we tell it change our function. Function in arc length is always 1, so we've defined our function to be 1. And we come down a little bit farther, where it multiplies our function, which is 1 for arc length, times the norm of the derivative vector. It computes it. It got it exactly at 10 pi, and then it computed it numerically. So the length of that piece of helix is approximately 31.42 linear units. Does this look like it's about 32 length? Let's kind of stretch it up like this way. So it looks like it goes from 0 to about let's say 27, and if you stretch it out a little bit, looks like it reasonably could be about 32. So that looks like a good estimate. So our calculation is correct. In our next video, we continue with problem two, which was the line integral of a function with a function. Onwards.